الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل بدعة ضلالة ثم أما بعد أيها الأحبة الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Truly the, the best speech is the speech of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and the worst uh, of the affairs are the invented matters. Matters that are invented in this deen and it is not part of it. And every single invented matter, every single bid'ah is misguidance. Uh, Inshallah, we'll continue our discussion uh, in business transactions in Islam. Uh, in our previous lecture, we talked about five uh, categories of sale contracts. Inshallah, I'm going to quickly review what we had learned yesterday. And inshallah, we'll continue today uh, learning about more uh, uh, categories of sale contracts in Islam. Uh, yesterday, we talked about five types. We talked about the common type of sale, which is the sale or the exchange of a commodity or a property for a monetary price, for money payment. And this is the normal or the common type of sale. Okay, this is the first type. The second type is called Bay'u uh, al-Muqayyada or the Muqayyada sale in which a property or an object in general is exchanged for another object, and neither of which is money payment. Like, for example, exchanging a property for a property, or a computer for a computer, or a computer for a printer. None of the two is a monetary uh, payment. Okay. The third type we talked about is a sarf, which is uh, money exchange or currency exchange. Currency exchange is a valid uh, transaction in Islam, providing that you are dealing with different currencies and that the, uh, the two exchange items should be delivered at the time of the contract. In other words, we should not have deferred payment. The two currencies, for example, if someone exchanging euros for dollars, the exchange should take place at the same place where the contract is concluded. No deferment, no deferred or deferral or delaying of any of the two should, should occur. This is called a sarf or a money or currency exchange. Type. The fourth type, or the fourth category of sale contracts that we talked about yesterday is Bay'u Salam. Bay'u Salam in Arabic is defined as Bay'u Mawsufin fi Zimmati bi Thamanin Ajil. To sell an object which is not available now, it does not exist now. But it's expected to exist, say, in a future date, a later future date. For like example, crops or fruits. It's not existing now, but you know it will exist, say, in December. So selling such an item for advanced payment. For advanced payment. And we mentioned many conditions. Yani, uh, as the scholars uh, say, this is yani, this type of sale is contradicting al qiyas the analogy. Because when we talked about uh, the conditions for the validity of a sale contract, that both the merchandise and the price must be present or in existence at the time of the contract. Here we have the merchandise is not available. It is not in existence yet at the time of the contract. 
Okay, but this is an exception. And the exception is by proved by the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, When he arrived at Al Madina, he found the people of Al Madina dealing with something similar to that. So he regulated their dealings, and he said, "Man aslafa فليسلف في شيء معلوم إلى وقت معلوم بكيل أو وزن معلوم." So if one want to engage in such a contract. Then it should be with the following condition that it should be very determined. This this object that would be delivered in the future has to be very clearly defined. Okay, as to its essence, its amount, its quality, its class, its kind, and things like that. And those mainly the conditions for the validity of that contract. And we talked about those conditions yesterday in a detailed manner. Okay, so a salam contract sometimes is called forward contract. It is the sale of an object which is not in existence now, but it will exist in a later future time for advanced payment. And the payment has to be, the price has to be paid in full at the time of the contract. And the last type or the fifth type of sale contracts that we talked about yesterday is Aqdul Istisna. The contract of istisna, or the contract of manufacturing, it is similar to uh, the solemn contract, but there are some differences. That it is uh, to sell uh, an object that to be manufactured or to be built. Also, it's not in existence now, but it is. It's to be built or to be manufactured for a payment or a price, or I mean a, p a price at the spot. Now, one of the differences, in, in fact, the majority of the scholars, the Maliki and the Shafi'i and the Hanbali scholars, they consider al-istisna exactly like a salam and they treat it like the salam and they apply it all the conditions. And Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, disagree with them. He said it is an independent, it is an independent contract, and it is different from the salam contract. And according to Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, and this opinion is favored by many scholars, and in fact, is adopted by the Assembly of Muslim Jurists in Jeddah, as I mentioned in their decisions in the year 19, uh, 14, 12, it's about uh, 20, 20, 22 years ago, they accepted this position of the Hanafis. Now, the differences between this contract and the Salam contract, uh, mainly two differences. In the Salam contract, the price has to be paid in full, in advance. Here, you do not have to pay the price in full. But some portion has to be paid at the time of the contract, and the rest could be paid in installments. Okay, this is one difference. The second difference, upon the conclusion of this contract, in the Salam contract, upon the conclusion of the contract, no one has the right to revoke the contract individually, unless the two parties agree to revoke that contract. Now here, uh, after the contract and before the manufacturer starts working in that project, the two parties, each one of them, has the right to revoke that contract. But once he starts, or the manufacturer starts manufacturing or making the product, then they cannot revoke the contract, except with mutual consent. Those are the two differences between uh, the two. Type. Inshallah, today I'm going to continue talking about the rest of the types or categories of sale contracts, which really represent a very good alternative to riba. And it's adopted by uh, Islamic banking or Islamic banks, they adopted some of those uh, transactions. Type. The sixth category of sale contracts uh, is the so-called al-bay'u bil-ajal or al-bay'u al-mu'ajjal or deferred sale. Deferred sale is the opposite of the salam sale, is the opposite of the forward sale. In a deferred sale contract or al-bay'u bil-ajal contract, we have immediate delivery against future payment. So the product or the commodity 
is delivered now while the payment is delivered in the future, in a later future date. This is called al bayu bil ajal. And this type of, uh, of sale is valid and uh, according to, it is, in fact, this is a unanimous consensus of the scholars. Okay, now, is it okay to uh, sell a commodity or an object using this type of contract with increasing the price if the, uh, if the uh, uh, price has to be paid at a later time? This is also acceptable, but there are certain conditions need to be fulfilled. Like for example, if someone want to sell a car to another person, and then he offered him two plans. Plan A, pay me $1,000 now and take the car. Or $2,000 at a later date. For example, a month from now or a year from now. Is this acceptable? It's acceptable, providing certain conditions fulfilled. What are those conditions? The first condition that both parties must choose one of the two, either cash or deferred payment. Now he provided two plans. So before the conclusion of the contract, they should decide which way they want to go. For the cash price or the deferred price. If they accepted the deferred price, this will become the final price of that product. Which means that even if the buyer, after the conclusion of the contract, decided to pay him now, he should pay this final price. So now I chose to pay you $2,000 for your car over a year. And we concluded the contract. Okay, a week from the conclusion of the contract and before paying, for example, my first installment, Allah blessed me with a bonus, and I wanted to pay the full price. So how much should I pay? The $2,000. So this condition means that whether, whether you pay it over the year or less than the year, you have to pay the full amount. And this mark a big difference between this contract and an interest-based contract. Because an interest-based contract, if you pay early, then you pay less. Here, once we agreed in the final price that you know, I would pay $2,000 over a year, then after that, if I decided to pay you earlier than that or not, I have to pay the final price, which is, in this example, the $2,000. This is the first condition. Also, another condition which is considered to be yeah, any part of this condition, it is not permissible to state interest rate as a separate item in the contract. Because if that is stated, this will uh, be against the first condition. Because mentioning of an interest rate, this means that the price will, be, will, be, will not be constant. This means that if I pay it early, I will pay less. So this contract, this condition, in fact, is part of the first condition. That we should not mention uh, interest rate as a separate item in the contract. That the third condition that the date or the day of payment must be mentioned clearly. The future date. Like for example, the $2,000 has to be paid over 60 months or over 12 months. You know, divided into 12 payments or 12 installments. It should be clear, uh, clearly uh, stated. The fourth uh, condition that, now if the purchaser or the buyer is late in paying any of the installments, then it is not permissible to charge a late fee. Charging a late fee is not permissible in this type of contract because it's a form of a riba. And once you pay a late fee, this means that you are paying for not paying in time. And this is exactly the riba used in the jahiliya. Akhirni wa azidka. In the jahiliya time, you know, if someone borrowed money from another person 
and it's a time to pay off the debt. If that person is unable to pay it, then the other party will say, okay, I will give you more time, but you have to pay more. And this is the type of riba that is mentioned in the Quran, riba and nasiya. So if those four conditions are fulfilled, then bay'ul ajal or the deferred sale contract uh, would be a valid contract and accepted in Islam. And this could be a very good alternative for uh, dealing with riba. There is a point, uh, uh, an issue related to this. There is a principle called ba'wa uh, ta'ajjal. Ba'wa ta'ajjal, it is uh, to reduce the amount you owe in return of exhibit, uh, accelerating uh, the settlement of the matter. Like if someone owes you a thousand dollar, and those thousand dollars is required to be paid maybe uh, in, in a year. Okay, six months, you need it, six, six months down the road, you needed the money. Then you give him a proposal. Okay, pay me $800 now. Now, according to the majority of the scholars, this principle, which is ta'ajjal, is not acceptable. This is the opinion of the Hanafi Madhab, the Maliki Madhab, the Shafi'i, and the famous opinion in the Hanbali Madhab. But Al Imam Ahmad Allah, has another opinion regarding this, and he says it's acceptable. Okay, and this last opinion, even it is an opinion in the Hanbali, in the Hanbali Madhab, but it is favored by many scholars for the absence of an evidence that, that tell it is not uh, permissible. There is no evidence. And we said the general principle that every transaction is considered to be acceptable unless we have an evidence to suggest otherwise. And so on. this is one of the characteristics of the Sharia. We said in the area of ma'amalat, any or every type of transaction is assumed to be valid in the Sharia, unless we have an evidence to suggest otherwise. Unlike in the area of ibadat, the area of devotional matters like prayer, prayers, fasting. No. In the area of ibadat, before you act, you need to have an evidence beforehand. Okay? You know, if you want to perform an act as an act of worship, seeking the reward of Allah, before you, work, before you act, you need to have an evidence. And this brings in uh, the issue of al-bid'ah, okay? But in the area of ma'amalat, every transaction is considered to be acceptable unless we have an evidence to suggest otherwise. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that Allah had created for you everything on the face of the earth means to consume it, to wear it, to sell it, to trade it. So the general rule that everything is allowed for us unless we have an evidence that it is not uh, allowed. So based on that, uh, you know, this opinion, which is an opinion, in the, uh, an opinion of Imam Ahmad, and it's favored by Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and his student Ibn al-Qayyim, and also adopted by the assembly of Muslim jurists in Jeddah. Okay, this which is uh, the principle that uh, says to reduce the amount of money owed in return of expediting or accelerating the settlement of that debt. Type. This is the sixth category of uh, sale contract which is called al bayu bil ajal. Now, uh, the seventh category is the, the so-called bay'ul murabaha. Al murabaha is cost plus profit sale. In bay'ul murabaha, it is an exchange of an object for a price. Now here, the object original price, which is the cost of that object, is known to the both parties. And also the profit, the fixed or the predetermined profit is known to the two parties. It's different from the common type of, of sale. In a common type of sale, you purchase an item, you can negotiate the price, but you are unaware about the original cost of that product. 
Here, it's a condition to know the original cost of that product. And I will show you how this type of transaction is adopted or applied by many Islamic banks as an alternative to a riba transaction. Inshallah, we'll go through an example to show how to purchase a house through the contract of Murabaha. But the most important thing that in the contract of Murabaha, that the cost and the profit, this is why it's called cost plus profit transaction or sale, sale contract. Both of them should be known to the both parties. Yeah, and the buyer knew the cost of that project, uh, that uh, product, and also how much the seller is making as a profit. Okay, type. Let's take an example. How to purchase a house through such a transaction. Type. The first step that the one who's interested in that house will approach the bank. The client will approach the bank and request the bank to purchase that house for him. Yani he will request the bank to, find, to purchase that house. Okay. And the purchaser will promise the bank that upon the house becomes uh, in the possession of the bank, then the, the, the client will purchase that house from him at a higher price. A higher price agreed upon by the two. Okay, so in fact, it is it, it, it consists of two contracts. The first contract that the bank will go ahead upon the request from the client to go ahead and purchase the house, and the bank will own the house. Then after that, the bank will resell the house to the client at a higher price, paid over a period of time. This is. This is the, the, the form of this contract, the so-called murabaha. And it is adopted by many or applied by many Islamic banks. Now, this type of contract is acceptable in Islam and there is nothing wrong with it. As long as the bank, you know, purchased the house and owned the house. This is a contract, then another contract, which is uh, to sell the same house to the client with a higher price paid over a period of time. And as I said, this is, this, uh, this is the most common mode uh, of Islamic financing used by uh, uh, Islamic banks. Type. The Eighth type of uh, contracts, uh, sell contracts, is bayul muzayda. Bayul muzayda, and this is uh, auctioning. Auctioning is acceptable in Islam, and we talked about this uh, yesterday briefly. Uh, but inshallah, I'm going to talk in some details about it today. It is a sale in which the price uh, is offered by the buyer. Okay, whether it is one buyer or more than one buyers, they offer the price, and then later on the seller will accept that price. This is bay al muzayda, which is called also in the modern uh, times they call it auctioning. Okay, so uh, it is okay in Islam to have such type of contract. Providing that the one who bid up the price is doing that with the intention to purchase, not with the intention to raise the price. Okay, which is called najash. And the Prophet says, Wala tanajashu. He prohibited us from uh, uh, you know, practicing such uh, type of practices, which is najash, to raise the price or to bid up the price. Uh, you know, with, without having the intention to purchase that object, regardless of what is the intention of that uh, person. Sometimes he must owing to his hatred to his brother, so we want him to pay more, or maybe he, he has agreement with the owner, you know, to raise uh, the price for that uh, project. 
طيب requesting a deposit from everyone who want to participate in that auction is also acceptable. Providing that at the end of the auction, if you do not buy, then that deposit has to be go back to you. And if you if you if you decided to buy that if, or if you if you bought the object, then you just you know complete the price. So that deposit should be towards the towards the full price of the project. But if you do not buy anything, then of course you have to get your deposit back. That's acceptable. Being a small fee for everyone who want to participate is acceptable as long as that fee to cover the expenses of, for example, printing the list and things of that, okay? Small fee for that is acceptable. Now, but being a deposit, which is like represent a part or it's more than just a small fee, is also acceptable providing that if you did not buy the object or you do not buy anything from the auction, you have to get your deposit back. This is the eighth type of contracts of sale uh, in Islam. Type. The ninth type is called Bay al Urbun. Bay al Urbun is down payment. Uh, to pay a down payment, to pay a sum of money. Uh, in advance to purchase a product. Now the product is in existence, but it is not present now. So you pay this sum of money just to assure the seller that you will purchase it. Or you are asking or requesting him to reserve it for you. Okay, and you pay like a down payment. Now if Upon the delivery of that object or that commodity, if you decided to go ahead and buy it, then of course you complete the rest of the money, the rest of the price, and you get the product. And if you decided not to purchase it, then that down payment will go to the uh, seller. It will be his, you know, and this is also acceptable. And it was mentioned that Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he did a transaction like that. And Abdullah ibn Umar narrated uh, or a statement of Abdullah ibn Umar that he approved such type of this. Uh, Ahmad and Abu Dawood and Malik, they, uh, they uh, mentioned a hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is the same thing like Bayi Al-Urbun but the hadith is a weak hadith Al-Imam Malik Rawahu An Yahya Ibn Malik Qala Haddathani Man Athiqu Bihi You know in the chain of narration in the Isnad of that hadith there is an unknown narrator Majhul Okay and the presence of unknown narrator in an Isnad of a hadith will render the hadith as a weak hadith Okay, because Al Imam Malik, the great Imam, narrated that hadith from also a great scholar, Yahya ibn Malik. But Yahya ibn Malik, he said, this is on the authority of the one whom I trust. But who is that person? We don't know about that person. And this is why the scholars of hadith graded this hadith as a weak hadith. The hadith says that the Prophet ﷺ prohibited such type of transaction is a weak hadith. So we, uh, we go you know, to uh, the general principle that every transaction is considered to be acceptable unless we have a positive evidence that suggests otherwise, and here we do not have a strong evidence or a st authentic evidence that suggests otherwise. Now, the last type of uh, contract is called a tawarruq. A tawarruq, some scholars they consider it as reversed murabaha. A tawarruq is a way to get cash money in your hand without getting into Riba. Now, a tawarruq is to purchase a commodity uh, in a deferred sale transaction, and then after you own the property, you sell it for a cash, for a lesser cash price. Like, for example, you purchase a car to be paid over 60 months by installment. 
okay, for $10,000. And then you resell the car for $8,000 in cash. This is a way to get cash now. Now, also according to the majority of the scholars, this type of sale is unacceptable because they consider it as a form of riba. Okay. But according to some other scholars, it is not riba. In fact, this is just the opposite of riba. This is just the opposite of riba. Okay. And there is no a clear evidence, clear or authentic and evident uh, evidence that says it you cannot do that. Okay. But they they set a condition that the the object should not be sold to the one you bought it from. Yeah, and for example, if you purchase a car from a bank, okay, uh, like in a, uh, using a deferred sale uh, transaction, and then you want to resell it, you should not resell it to the bank. You resell it to a different party, a third parties, okay? Also, they said you should not delegate the bank, you should not use the bank or the seller as a wakil for you to sell the car. So providing that you did not sell it back to the same seller, also not to have him as your delegate to sell that car. Uh, you know, having the bank as a, as a wakil for you to sell the car is called the organized, the organized tawarruq, or the bank's tawarruq, which is agreed upon by all contemporary scholars that, that it is not acceptable. But selling this product, or this commodity, or this car, or this house, or this object to another party, a different party, that would be acceptable. This is a way for someone to get cash without getting involved into riba. Uh, inshallah, I'm going to conclude today's lecture by this. Next week, inshallah, I'm going to start talking about riba in general and also contemporary and modern transactions like credit cards, insurance, you know, and such uh, modern transactions, inshallah. We're going to talk in details about those, inshallah, next week, bismillah ta'ala. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك وصلى الله تفضل